What's going on believers is rebalanced with another weekly market review and outlook. Please take a minute to read over the risk disclaimer here. And I'm going to pull up the economic calendar now. And as far as the review, there was no higher media impact on Monday. Tuesday, we had both. Wednesday, both. I was anticipating a little bit more out of this particular news release. But as you can see from my Wednesday's live commentary, there wasn't much offered. Thursday, had both medium and high impact, as well as on Friday. Coming into this week, so Memorial Day, had a short trading day today. You'll see that when I get to the charts. Uh, some inflation news tomorrow. Job-related news Wednesday with a Fed chair speaking. Well, a fair member, Fed member speaking. Excuse me. Thursday, we start a new month. June 1st, so a new monthly candle will start printing Wednesday evening at 5 p.m., which will technically be Thursday's daily candle. Thursday, June 1st. The daily candle over that day. Got high and medium impact news by way of non farm payroll. And that same Fed member speaking again. And then just the typical Friday NFP news releases on Friday. Now going into the charts. Because we're about to enter a new month in just a couple of days, just want to show the monthly perspective on everything. So this is a dollar. This is S&P. This is a NASDAQ. This is Dow Jones. It's the Russell, but skip that. And then gold. I'm going back to the dollar. And running through just a quick recap so far of the month. So there's an efficiency here on the monthly. The bodies of the candles have been respecting that. And so a bullish monthly candle so far for May with just a couple of days left. Looking at this area here, we're at midpoint of this wick, 43, 17 and three quarters. If there's continuation on the upside, that is a, a long way from now. But that definitely would be an area of interest for me as far as the monthly is concerned. NASDAQ, as far as the monthly is concerned, really just the opening of this candle and then the highs up here. So if it's able to get above this opening, the highs up there. Dow Jones. So the sell side below this low. The midpoint of this range, so 32, 322. And of course, the highs, these are relatively equal now. And so as you can see, I don't have much of a bias right now. There's not much that I can anticipate happening. I need to collect some more information and see some more price action. And hopefully the news releases and things like that that are coming out will help with my analysis and trying to get to a most likely drawn liquidity. But for gold, this monthly rejection block, holding strong, sending the price back within the range. Nothing really here on a monthly except for the, the bodies of these candles down here and the opposite end rejection block on the monthly. So I'll just start here, do the weekly and then work my way back up. As far as the weekly is concerned, there's an inefficiency down here that we've already traded into last week. This week, we open with a gap lower, so that 1940.7 is a level I'm interested in seeing how price responds if it trades down there. Otherwise, since it's on the weekly right now, right, the opening price here would be an area of interest for me. Dow Jones weekly chart you can see these gray lines are different monthly highs and lows how price has reacted at them and consolidated on others. So the April low, we've kind of touched that for three or well, four straight weeks. We've touched that. Be interested to see if this week also has any interest in getting back to that level and utilizing it. 
but nothing really too like obvious at this point. Like I said, I just need to collect some more information before I can really have any idea of what I think may happen. As you can see, NASDAQ on a weekly complete opposite, technically in the, the sh in the short term, than Dow Jones, which has been traded lower. NASDAQ has been very aggressive higher, trade above April 2022's high. And then as far as the weekly is concerned, I'm watching this area in efficiency here, seeing if it has any willingness to get up there. It's quite away from where it is right now, but still very possible, especially looking at how it's behaved here. There were tech stock company earnings as well in the midst of all of this so definitely could have been uh very very helpful and what actually happened with price delivery e mini s p that's that same monthly level seeing how it opened up with a gap as well has not come back down to that december 2022's high which we touched three four or five times now since we first got back up there ultimately sitting in the range here but on the high end of the range and and consolidating this is a very tight price action still in my opinion not really giving any real obvious directional signals dollar weekly chart so this high here i'm watching so 105.103 is of interest of me and then this is that monthly inefficiency just transpose down to the weekly chart below there's still these relative equal lows here as well as these relative equal lows here if it wants to potentially turn back around and into the daily i'll do the the review from the daily and again like I, said, I don't really have much by way of an outlook i need more information i will have at least one video of live price commentary this week in which i will in there disclose if i have established any sort of a idea where price may be and may be being delivered to next but currently just looking at it from the daily here this is a swing low this swing low has seen nothing but higher prices since each daily candle took out previous day and previous days highs working its way up breaking through areas of inefficiency stopping short above this candles high and there's this gap in between these bodies of the candle called a volume imbalance traded into that volume imbalance and reject it still closed above this inefficiency this week we've traded down into it as well about the midpoint of it and reject it higher and at the e mini s p from the daily so it was able to take out the liquidity above here. So I actually just removed this level. I don't see any need for it anymore. It didn't happen until the gap opening from last week into this week. So this was one of those moments where holding a trade over the weekend could have been profitable for someone. If that was their exit, it would have taken them out that trade once it opened and it was above that price. Uh, they would have gotten taken out in profit. But as you can see, it didn't get up all the way to this high and immediately it returned back down to near that closing price. So that's what another reason why I'm still not a big fan of holding over the changeover between sessions or especially holding over the weekend. I really don't see the need for it, just especially given the conditions that the market's in right now. Once it starts trending again. I will be more than happy to hold runners over the weekend to see if I can get some sort of a continuation towards the objective I'm looking for. But so this high up here, 42.45, just want to see if it gets up there, how it responds. That's all I pretty much have for the e mini S&P. And then just from the review part of it, let me see Monday to Tuesday, we drop down into this inefficiency. Wednesday, drop way lower to and through this inefficiency but eventually reject it close back up very near the original well the the higher inefficiency here that it first engaged and then it kind of consolidated within there but very volatile look at the wicks and tails of both of these candles and then on friday 
a nice expansion higher capped off with the gap opening. NASDAQ. So definitely don't have any daily targets. All the targets are like weekly, monthly, which we already talked about. Let me just make sure I can transpose these down to that time frame. You know, they're still going to be very hard to see because they're so far above. But okay, this one does kind of come into a range of sight. And so uh, Monday, traded down into the inefficiency. Tuesday, traded into a lower. Wednesday, even lower, but look at the bodies of the candles, still respect it. Gap higher Thursday, retest that inefficiency. And then Friday, very explosive rally during the week. Capped off by a gap opening higher. Dow Jones daily. Hasn't really had any runs on buy side, continuously running sell side. So ran out April's low here. And then just basically worked April's low. Eventually took out this candle's low and this candle's low with this move down here. And got to February 2023's low, which is this right here. Look at the bodies of the candles, respect that. Rallied off of that Friday, got higher to start this week and then last but not least okay gold so just looking at it from the daily chart right that 1940.7 nothing really in here in a daily next thing if it is able to get through there it's going to be well there's just inefficiency here but then within that inefficiency there's just this low here so it'll also be a target as far as me looking to see some sort of entry to possibly get there or once it gets there looking to see some sort of an entry signal to continue lower or to take a, a trade back higher and so with that being said shout out to the believers i will have at least like i said one more video posted this week one with live price commentary as you can see there's no fluctuations here where that timer is Price is no longer moving. It closed at 12 noon central time for the holiday. And it will reopen at 5 p.m. And uh, that's when I'll really start to be able to get some sort of an idea of what could happen in price delivery on the weekly candle this week and how I may want to engage and try to take advantage of that. But again, other than that, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.